If you're going on a Panama Canal cruise, especially for the first time, these are some mistakes that you are going to want to avoid because they definitely can impact your cruise. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. We recently came back from our very first Panama Canal cruise. We did love it. We had amazing weather for 12 days and honestly, probably I couldn't ask for better in that way, but there were definitely, well, there were a couple of things that I realized as we got closer to our cruise and even on our cruise that I regretted just a little bit. And other things though, I had done some research and other things that I was so glad that we did. And of course there were other things that I found out on the cruise ship that I did really want to share with you so that you can have a better cruise and avoid some of the mistakes that some of the people on our cruise did make. Now in this video, I'm gonna share information that you are going to need about the itinerary, about the cruise ship, about the Panama Canal itself, and even about what to pack and what not to pack. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. Number one, not knowing if you are going through the new or the old locks of the Panama Canal. And I have to admit, I did not know this when I booked my cruise. Now, it turned out that we did go through the newer locks, which are the Aqua Clara locks. They were built in 2016. Now, from a lot of the videos and a lot of the articles that I read about this, this was a potential mistake. The old locks definitely seem to be more interesting. You actually, when you sail through with your cruise ship, you'll actually get very close to the walls. So there's obviously a lot more history there, a lot more in terms of the engineering that can be really interesting from even a historical perspective. And even the view of it itself, I think is a little bit more engaging. However, there are some different options. I will talk about that later. And I also do have a little bit of a counter argument to that now that I've done my cruise and we've done the newer locks. And I do have some thoughts on this. I will save that for a little bit later, but there are some reasons why you might even prefer to have a cruise that is going through the newer locks. Which brings me to point number two and another potential mistake. Are you booking the partial or the full transit? Now we booked a partial transit in good part because we liked the convenience of being able to leave from Fort Lauderdale and return round trip to Fort Lauderdale. And also, you know, there is a little bit of a time constraint for many people, but we did think once we were on board the cruise, we thought, oh, how interesting would it have been to actually cross through, go from Florida to California. I do think being able to cross through the entire canal, while it's not a mistake to book a partial canal transit, I do think that the full transit, well, there is something that really does have an appeal. Now, moving on to the actual Panama Canal and your day in particular as you are crossing through the Panama Canal. By the way, I will talk about other cruise ports of call and potential mistakes that you might be tempted in making in the cruise ports of call shortly. But regarding the Panama Canal itself, some things that you are going to want to do and mistakes to avoid is don't think that you're not going to wake up early. You are going to be waking up early on the day that you cross through the Panama Canal. Now in our case, and I think it's the case with really most cruise lines, we were on Holland America on Rotterdam, but we actually received the day before a schedule that is approximate of really the itinerary of how the cruise ship is going to be crossing through the canal. So we knew that we would start crossing at around uh, 6 a.m. That was the very beginning part. I will leave, if I can find the itinerary, I will leave it here on the screen. The sun was just coming up and it really was something very beautiful and interesting to see. Now you might be wondering what to expect as you cross through the Panama Canal and you probably, like me, have heard that it's an entire day. So in our case, we started at 6 a.m. and we actually crossed back through because we did do a partial canal transit. We actually crossed back through uh, by about 6 p.m. or so. So it really was a very full, long day. However, something that really, if you've done Alaska before and maybe you've been in Glacier Bay, 
then you know that that day, really there's a lot going on, a lot to see. So something that surprised me was there really is a lot of downtime during that day. So don't think that you're going to be watching at the bow or from your balcony or from one of the upper decks, wherever you decide to watch, and that you'll actually be watching all day with interest. It really is pretty slow. You've got a lot of downtime. There are some aspects, some parts of the day that are more visually interesting and some other aspects that are pretty much just like a regular sea day. Now, when it comes to crossing through the Panama Canal, the most popular spot to be at is going to be the bow of the cruise ship if your cruise ship opens up the bow. Now, normally the bow on the ship that we were on is only open to the crew. However, on this day, they do open it up similar to when we were in Alaska in Glacier Bay. Oh, it is so nice to get close up. However, some people, what they like to do is go to the bow of the cruise ship. So if that is something that you wanna do, it probably is the very best view as you do cross through that early part of the canal, the first few hours. Well, what people do is they actually get up very, very early. It is a mistake to think that you cannot get up very early if that's where you want to spot. Now it opened, my understanding is at 6 a.m., but people told us there were people waiting already before 5 a.m. So expect that to be a very early morning if that is something that you want to do. Now at the same time, you also have to expect big crowds. People said it was just wall to wall people. So that is something to keep in mind. Now I do have a little bit of an alternative, a little bit of an idea and a tip to share with you that works particularly well if you are doing a partial transit. So what we did, and this was a little bit intentional, is we actually watched the transit in the early morning from our balcony. And what we did is we ordered room service. Now on our cruise ship, room service is included. This was really something very easy to do for a lot of the early mornings. But if room service is not included, you can simply pay for that, or you can go up to the buffet or down to one of the cafes and pick up something and bring it back to your cabin. We just found it nice and easy and relaxed because it was such an early morning to watch from our balcony. And I guess by about nine o'clock or so, we started to walk around the ship. We took a look from the promenade deck. We did walk onto the bow. We also looked from the upper deck. So we were able to get really a good view of what was going on as we were passing through in the earlier stages of the locks. However, it is a mistake to think that that is it and that is your only opportunity. Because in our case, what we did is we knew we would be crossing back through the locks in the afternoon. We had heard it is much less busy on the bow. And yes, that was definitely true. So after spending most of the afternoon in the Gatton Lake, where we were mostly stationary, what we did is we headed down to the bow, I think around probably 3 p.m. We were supposed to cross through at around 4 p.m. But it was really interesting. We got to see the tugboats and everything that was going on. It was really interesting as the cruise ship really placed itself ready to be able to cross back through the locks. So we were able to watch that. We were actually in the very front row at the time that we arrived. It definitely did get busier as we got closer to 4 p.m. So take a look at your schedule. And if you are able to head there a little bit earlier in the afternoon, you are gonna find that it's much less busy and obviously less of an early morning. Now don't forget, have your cameras ready, your video, whatever you're doing, have that ready. It really is a sight to see. Now, when it comes to the Panama Canal, something that is a good idea is to learn a bit about the history of the Panama Canal, of the region, of what is going on both historically and even right now, there are some different things that are going on there. So that is something really interesting. And on the cruise ship, if you don't have a chance to read about it before the cruise, you know, I know a lot of people are engineering or history buffs. So probably if that is you, read a book about it, watch some documentaries about it. However, if that is not you, like me, then, you know, go to one of the onboard talks and that is going to give you a lot of information. Okay, so moving on beyond the Panama Canal itself, because that's actually just pretty much one day of the entire cruise. So in our case, even though our cruise was 12 days, so we do have to think about the other ports and the excursions and the do's and don'ts. So firstly, and I think this is something that just did surprise me. I've done many Caribbean cruises, but something that did surprise me, and I think is a potential mistake, is not really realizing that these cruise ports of call that you're going to in Central America, 
in particular, or even in the Caribbean, South America, they are not going to be as developed as many of the Caribbean cruise ports of call that a lot of people are used to if they've cruised before. So that is something to just be aware of. We were actually told about this by the cruise director on our cruise ship is there is a lot of petty theft in some of those cruise ports of call. And it's not that the local people are not nice, but you are gonna find in some of the different cruise ports of call, for instance, we were in Cartagena, and there are a lot of people that are coming up to you that are trying to sell you things, trying to sort of, I guess, ask for money in different ways. And it was definitely much more than we were used to in the majority of the Caribbean cruise ports of call. So what you'll wanna do is really take a look at some of the cruise ports of call and decide where you can visit on your own, what is easy, and the other places that maybe you are better off booking either a cruise line excursion or with a reputable tour company, but you definitely don't wanna just get off the cruise ship in some ports of call and just take a taxi unless you're very comfortable. So Cartagena was definitely one of those places. And the other one was Porto Limon in Costa Rica. The area around the cruise ship, you definitely could walk around, but I do think that you are better off on an excursion. Now, in another video, I'm gonna share a full review or really our full Panama Canal experience in terms of our cruise ship and the different excursions that we did take. We actually had a really wonderful one uh, in Montego Bay, Jamaica, but I will save the details for another video. If you do have questions or things that you would like me to talk about, please let me know down in the comments below. Now I am gonna get back to the Panama Canal and some things that you'll really wanna know about that and the cruise and the locks. But first I do wanna talk about some potential packing mistakes because definitely this was a mistake that some people made and you don't wanna do this. Now on a Panama Canal cruise, it is definitely hot, it is sticky, and yes, there are mosquitoes and bugs in some of the cruise ports of call, so you will want to bring bug spray. Now we actually picked this up in Fort Lauderdale at a CVS uh, right before our cruise, so I didn't even fly with it. I wasn't sure that a small travel size would be enough. I think it would have been, but we did just pick it up when we were in Fort Lauderdale before our cruise, but you wanna bring that and you wanna make sure that you have that for excursions. As a matter of fact, on one of our excursions, I brought my bottle and I was just sharing it with the 20 or so people that were on our excursion. That was in Jamaica, but definitely when we were in Costa Rica, we were doing a little canoe trip on a river and it was definitely a little bit buggy there. So it is something to make sure that you do have with you. Now also super important, make sure that you do bring Afterbite or even Benadryl, just something in case you do get any bug bites, just something to treat that. Now the other thing is don't forget to bring sunscreen and to wear it. Definitely a mistake to think. Sometimes it was overcast, but the sun is really out. You can get a really bad sunburn. My son did get a bad sunburn on one day. And me, even though I was wearing 30 sunscreen, I still got a lot of redness. So the sun is definitely hot. Now, the other thing that you will want to pack, and I actually forgot to pack it or just didn't think that I would need it on this cruise, is aloe vera. So I did pick it up on the cruise ship. I think I paid $17 for a bottle of aloe vera. So in any case, if you can bring some from home, I think that that is better. There is an aloe vera that I absolutely love. It is organic, it is non-sticky, it works so well. I will leave it down in the description below this video, but I definitely suggest packing this not only for this cruise, but even for other Caribbean or hot weather cruises. Now, by the way, if you're getting ready for your cruise and you are trying to keep organized, I do have the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now, the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that will help you to keep organized for your cruise from the time that you booked your cruise all the way through disembarkation. Now it includes cruise packing lists, cruise shore excursion planning forms, cruise budget planning forms, outfit planning forms, and more. If you are interested in what's included in the Ultimate Cruise Planner, I will leave all of the information linked down below in the description of this video in case you do wanna check it out. Okay, now this mistake is something that is really quite relevant right now. And it does have to do with some of the news that we hear about the Panama Canal. So one mistake not to make, and I definitely have seen this a lot on social media, is don't listen to the rumors. So what you really need to do is follow and listen to what the cruise line is saying. Before our cruise for months, I was seeing rumors saying that all Panama Canal cruises are going to be canceled. I had seen this up to a week before my cruise and no Panama Canal cruises are not being canceled. Obviously 
follow whatever the current events are. But really, even due to the drought or levels in the Panama Canal, there really is a schedule, there are reservations that are made, and no overall Panama Canal cruises are not being canceled. Now, obviously this could change in the future, but this is my best advice for right now. Now, speaking of current events, there are some different things that are happening. And in the case of our cruise, one of the things that we were not able to do is as we were crossing through the Panama Canal, usually there is an option of different excursions they can take you to panama city there are others that even if you are crossing through those new locks that you can actually get off the cruise ship and you can do an excursion in the old locks definitely something very interesting if you do have a cruise that is going through the new locks but unfortunately those were cancelled that we only heard of when we were on the cruise ship and that had to do with some potential civil unrest that was happening somewhere uh, near panama or between panama and the cruise ship so that was the reason why it doesn't mean this will be all the time but this definitely was something that did happen during our cruise now this brings me back to point number one which had to do with the old locks and the new locks and in this case i am talking about the choice of cruise ship so this could be a potential mistake but maybe not in the way that you are thinking now in our case we were on a relatively new cruise ship. As a matter of fact, it's Holland America's newest cruise ship, Rotterdam, loved the cruise ship. And since the Panama Canal is really only one day, I'm glad we were on a newer cruise ship, even though it went through the newer locks because we got to have 12 days on board this beautiful, relatively new cruise ship. Absolutely loved it. So I do think that the cruise ship that you're on and the experience that you're going to have is very important so obviously if itinerary if going through those old locks is more important to you than anything else definitely look for that but otherwise if cruise ship experience is important to you then i would pay more attention to that than the old or the newer locks but please let me know down in the comments below what you think oftentimes the old locks is going to be reserved for those smaller cruise ships and oftentimes not always but those newer cruise ships are going to go through the newer locks now this mistake was one that i had heard from some people on our cruise ship and this is expecting a panama canal cruise to be similar to a 10 or an 11 day caribbean cruise it is not the same now what i mean is the atmosphere on the ship is not the same a panama canal cruise we came to find out is a much more relaxed and laid back type of experience than most of the caribbean cruises that we have done now some of the people on board our cruise ship commented about how a lot of the passengers were a little bit older than they were used to on many of the caribbean cruises and i do think that that's the case a little bit like alaska tends to be generally a bit of an older demographic but also considering that these cruises are really outside of the school break it really is a bucket list for many people but maybe a longer cruise really does appeal more to somebody who's a little bit older maybe has a little bit more flexible time like somebody who's retired so this could factor in but it is something to keep in mind that being said we had a wonderful time and the people on board our cruise ship were lovely. Now, another mistake to avoid on your Panama Canal cruise has to do with packing. So firstly, you do wanna actually avoid overpacking. What we came to find out is really, if you are on a cruise that's 12 nights or even 15 nights, is you can pack for about seven days and then what you can do is either rewear items or even wash items. Now, this brings me to point number two. So Panama Canal, it is hot, it is humid. Honestly, my hair did not do well during this cruise. There was so much humidity. So that means our clothes is gonna feel sticky as well. So you'll wanna kind of plan for that. Now, something that we did, which I do recommend, is we used the laundry service on board. Now, I don't think our cruise ship did actually have um, your own washer and dryer that you could use like a laundrette on board. So what we did is we took the laundry service that was available for all 12 days. I think it was unlimited for about a hundred dollars and that included all of our pressing and all of our washing as well. And this way our items came back either on hangers 
or folded. It was really nice. I even washed or had almost all of my clothing washed before we got back home. So that was definitely convenient. But if you don't want to spend $100, if you maybe don't have that much to wash, then what you could do is you can just get one of the laundry bag specials. And depending on your cruise line, it could be anywhere from between $30 and $40, usually for a bag of laundry. So that's definitely something to plan for. Or of course, you can also hand wash items in your cabin. Now, speaking of packing for a long cruise, I do have a video where I really do go into detail about how to pack lighter for a longer cruise, if that is something that you wanna do. So I will leave that video right after this one, but I would love to hear from you. Please let me know if you have gone on a Panama Canal cruise, share any of your mistakes and your tips down in the comments below. And please let me know if you are going to be going on a Panama Canal cruise and any questions that you may have. Now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I am gonna leave all of the information about the Life While Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner linked down below in the description description of this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.